Well, hello and welcome back, or welcome to those of you tuning in for the first time to Hope Revealed. I'm your host, Matt Crump, and I come to you every Tuesday with episodes of Hope, Help, and Health. You can expect guests that give us great information and insight in the world of business, health, and personal experience, all presented to you as a way to find a Hope Revealed. As a person myself who's been battling stage four cancer, I wanted to bring a platform to you that would specifically bring hope as well as help. And that can be done through our special guests, information I've been able to locate, and information from emails and messages I receive from you, our followers. And you can always email us here at community at godsgotthis.love for questions, comments, or content. On today's episode, we're going to dive deep into life and a hope revealed moment through the life of a very special guest. Welcome to Hope Revealed. Hey everyone, Uh, I'm Mark Goeth. I am the Vice President of Sales and Business Development at Switcher Studio. Uh, We're switcherstudio.com. We create a platform that makes it super simple for people to create great professional looking video with uh, iOS devices. Uh, We're trying to disrupt the video production market, make it super simple for anyone, uh, regardless of their skill level, to create great video, whether that's live or recorded content. So uh, check out uh, the platform available at switcherstudio.com. Hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode here of Hope Revealed. I'm super excited to have our guest today, Mark, from Switcher Studio. And you heard a little bit on his intro about what he is doing and the company that he works for. And man, it has been amazing. I remember when they made the launch and talked about Switcher Studio. And I thought, man, that is going to be an exciting opportunity for people with software in, uh, in the social media world. And it has been really doing some great things so far. And, uh, and even more so now, um, I've uh, been on LinkedIn, as you all know. Hi. And uh, Mark is on LinkedIn as well. And there has been some great activity in the past couple of years on LinkedIn, specifically because they opened up the door for video. And uh, in the midst of that, uh, Mark has been able to, uh, to talk to a few folks about how you can actually incorporate Switcher Studio uh, into something like a live broadcast with uh, the most incredible so- uh, social media platform out there, LinkedIn, or uh, little places like, I don't know, Facebook or something like that. You know, you can do things over there too. Uh, and YouTube, right? I think YouTube probably do as well, right? Yeah, uh, YouTube, uh, really any social platform. Yeah, sky's the limit. So I know for a fact, as a guy who's a, a video guy, a production guy, I have probably 50 video apps on my phone and, uh, and several on my, on my uh, MacBook Pro here. And uh, they all have their own purpose. Um, a lot of times I just wish they would all just make one big company and get married and do what I want them to do, but they don't. Uh, but one of the things that I found that you have in your studio, your studio, your product called Switcher Studio, is so many things, so many options that not just uh, give you an opportunity to create a video, but to make them really, really fun. Um, you can finally get some stuff with uh, lower thirds and, and, uh, different types of, instead of just a plain old text, you know, the whatever 12 we get from iMovie or something like that, they're boring after three months. So, I mean, tell me a little bit about Switcher Studio. What's it all about? Um, you know, what are those, some of those benefits? What does that look like? Um, how can you use it? Uh, I know it's for a phone, right? So I mean, let some folks know what that means. Phone versus laptop versus, you know, all that. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Switcher Studio originally, uh, was, kind of started back in 2015 uh, as a video production uh, in a software that you could use to create video. This was obviously pre-Facebook Live. This was pre-Meerkat, uh, even pre-Periscope, uh, you know, all those platforms uh, that some of them still exist. Some of them are gone by the wayside now. But um, when we think about live video, uh, for the most part, from a social perspective, we think about one camera looking at it what you see is what you get, right? Like there's some of us that are able to hold people's attention and create, uh, you know, an engaging conversation with someone without having any sort of graphics or, you know, uh, <laughs> I mean, Matt, for example, um, that's all I what, got is one camera. I'm sorry. Keep going. What we wanted to do is we wanted to, 
to take that same technology, the ability to use your phones, because people are used to using their phones for everything but making a phone call. Um, you know, <laughs> we're, we're always shooting video with it. Uh, you know, the cameras and stuff are getting better and better on, on these devices, as was evident uh, in the most recent uh, iPhone launch, uh, you know, two weeks ago with the three cameras, et cetera. But what we wanted to do is we wanted to give people the ability to use those devices that can shoot in 1080 or now 4K uh, the ability to connect multiple devices together to create a multi-camera broadcast. Um, so our platform allows you to use iOS devices. It is currently iOS only as far as the application is concerned. We do have some ways to bring in other types of devices, Android, PC, etc., uh, through a URL experience. But uh, what you can do is you can use up to nine devices, connect them on the same wireless network to a central switcher, put multiple angles on screen, switch between your angles, put custom graphics, logos, photos, pre-recorded video, and basically do a professional, professionally produced video shoot uh, where you edit on the fly, uh, where once you're done recording or done streaming, you're done. There's no post-production work. There's no you know hours and hours and hours sitting in front of iMovie or Final Cut or Adobe Premiere. Uh, to you know, edit all those angles together. You're editing it, producing it on the fly. Uh, so when you're done, you can get back to Life. other things in your world, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Sorry. So let me pause. I got a couple questions since you just threw some of that stuff out there. Uh, first question. Uh, well, I'll come to the second one there. First question was you said a URL experience, uh, meaning because obviously this is all iOS based at this point. However, you have options for other things, right? So. Um, when you say URL experience, does that mean that somebody with an Android could could do it through a cloud-based scenario on your website if they had an account? Or how would something like that, is it really difficult for somebody with an Android or is it is it going to be okay to use? Sorry, so, the question. No, I'm gonna, people are going to wonder. It is. It's a good question and people definitely uh, ask it a lot. So everything has to start with at least one I iOS device. So in order to go live from Switcher, you have to have at least an iPad, an iPhone, or an iPod, one of those three, um, because it has to start with a, an iOS device. Uh, when I said a URL experience, basically what you can do is you can bring in cameras uh, that are on Android devices through by sending that uh, device itself uh, through Slack or instant message, messenger, email, whatever it is, a way to get that device a URL. They can open up uh, the URL in a browser uh, and bring that specific camera, that device in as a source to your broadcast. So you can't go live from a single Android device, but you can use Android cameras as additional camera angles for your production. Mm. Oh, what about <laughs> with something like that? So we have a built-in delay in our platform, which uh, before we actually send the uh, video and audio feed to a platform, let's say LinkedIn Live in this case, uh, before we send it out to LinkedIn, we actually will do anywhere between a six second to an, or sorry, a six frame to an 18 frame delay where we compile the video and audio data, make sure it's all synced up and then send it out. Um, so a lot of people are like, well, that's not real time. Well, nothing is real time. Um, even live video is not, even live TV is not real time. There's a delay built in there, uh, yeah. especially now, you know, with FCC regulations and stuff like that. People's uh, bad mouth and stuff. Ooh, people's bad mouth. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, um, if you go live to Facebook, let's say it's about a 30 to 45 second delay, depending upon connectivity, where you're at hops, you know, et cetera. You go live to LinkedIn, it's about a 45 second to a minute delay wow. uh, between what's happening on your Switcher Studio platform and what the general public is seeing. Um, so when you introduce a 200 millisecond or a 600 millisecond delay, it's not introducing much in the way of anything into that delay. But what it does is it allows us to compile that data so there's not that lip flap, there's not mm. that you know, lips are moving and the, the like audio is not karate movie. Oh, yeah. oh, how you doing, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> 100%. So uh, that's something we've thought about uh, and has been built into the app essentially from day one. Um, we've had a delay. What, we, what we've done recently is we've introduced additional delays. So if you've got bad Wi-Fi or you've got some 
uh, network latency issues, you can actually increase that delay to give the platform more time to catch up, if you will. Mm, that's really good. Yeah, I've seen that happen a lot of times uh, myself, you know, and I've got good internet service, but, you know, everybody knows that it sucks sometimes, you know. Well, it uh, goes up and down, you know. It sure it, does. It, uh, even though, you know, you're paying for 12 megs of upload speed or whatever, you might have 12 megs of upload speed for 98% of the day, but that other 2% of the day when it goes down to like four, is when you want to go live and yeah. <laughs> you know then, then you've got some delay so another question uh, i have then when you're talking about that because i know that um, for me if i'm doing a a webinar or something like that where i want to do a live experience rather than an evergreen kind of a deal um you know with that kind of a delay especially on linkedin i'm not trying to put you on the spot i'm just thinking about questions that i'm thinking some people might ask would be if i'm doing that and i'm looking at my monitor to monitor people's comments and feedback while I'm on the show per se, if we were doing this yep. live right now on, on LinkedIn, by the way, I've LinkedIn delay because LinkedIn hasn't given me access to LinkedIn live yet. So maybe one day, um, this guy right over here, uh, over here. Yeah. He, he might be able to help me out with that. But anyway, <laughs> we're trying to go live. So if you're live Mark and we're trying to do the show and I'm trying to be engaging with comments that are coming in my way, I mean, we're talking about like there's going to be a 45 second to a one minute delay on those things coming to me on a live broadcast per se? Yes, um, which may be a problem if you have like one or two viewers and, and you know, someone comments something and you don't see it for a while. <laughs> okay, one or two, um, I get it. Let's but, say they've got 100, 200 people on the, on the show. 200, 100, 200 people, even 50 people. You know, if those people are engaging with your content, there's going to constantly be stuff coming in to where you're going to be able to address that stuff. Uh, and you're going to, need, I mean, not that you're going to need that delay, but that delay is actually going to help out because it's going to give you time to address those things before the next thing comes in and the next thing comes in. It wasn't That's designed great. with that in mind. Uh, you know, it, it has to do with um, the way that LinkedIn or Facebook is encoding, transcoding, receiving that video how many hops it's taking to get to that server before yeah. then and then how many hops it's taking to get to you as a viewer um so the only platform i know of that has that super low latency is youtube i think you can get it as low as like five seconds um but you've got to have a screaming fast internet connection to be able mm -hmm. to get that from your platform to them without any sort of hiccups it definitely introduces a lot of camera lag uh, you know, when you're doing that drop frames, potentially all of that stuff. So um, for the most part, people that are doing, you know, live videos on, you know, the Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, all those platforms. I mean, Twit maybe Twitch is a, a, a bad example because a lot of people that are doing Twitch, they've got robust machines that are built specifically yeah. for gaming. Dude, They've I just got, shot like, five more people. Dude, did you see that? Woo! Yeah. <laughs> That'd be my son. I mean, they've got dedicated, you know, pipes and, uh, you know, like T1 lines coming into their house, all that stuff, you know, to make sure that their connection is good. I mean, when, right. when, you, when you're at that level, definitely. But for most of us, uh, you know, even uh, large companies that are doing, you know, live videos, LinkedIn Live, et cetera, they're using their yeah, they don't have T1 corporate lines, network, right? right? Yeah. They're using their corporate network, which might have, you know, 20, 30 megs of upload speed, but it's being shared across 150,000 people, you know, however many people <laughs> are in their building. Um, you know, so for the most part, um, that's not something that has ever been an issue for us uh, is the, the delays with okay. those platforms. Well, that sounds good. I, I think as a software company, uh, because of the different latency issues between different platforms, it must be interesting in the way you have to write your program and code because you've got like every one is a different one for you guys. I would think as a software guy, you're like, okay, we got to make this one work for Facebook. This one has to work for LinkedIn. This one has to work, right? Is that a little bit like that for you as a software developer? Yeah. Yeah. Um, luckily for us, uh, there's a standard video protocol, uh, that has been around for a long time, uh, called RTMP. And basically Facebook uses it. YouTube uses it. LinkedIn uses it. Twitter uses it. Twitch uses it. So there's a um, standard then so there's, there's a, a stand. A good there is point. a standard, uh, good starting point. There are variations uh, of that that are starting to, you know, be introduced now, but 
for the most part, it's all RTMP protocol, um, which is, you know, basically server URL stream key that you basically plug in from, uh, you know, different video players, uh, and just about every video player supports that. So like Bright Cove, Uyala, um, you know, Kaltura, Wowza, the list goes on and on. They're all RTMP enabled video players. Um, so it's a pretty standard protocol from mm -hmm. that uh, from that perspective. Oh, that sounds great, man. Uh, one of the questions I had that I was thinking uh, earlier when you're describing that is uh, is is evergreen. So um, we're talking about lives. Uh, so it is possible then to have uh, evergreen, meaning something that's been pre-recorded that you could put into your live broadcast and just schedule it out. So if I wanted to have a schedule and say you know. Tuesdays, my program launches at three o'clock and it was the video number X, Y, Z. And then somebody from the team loads up that thing, puts it in the switcher thing and launches it. and It goes live at whatever time. Is that, that's something that's possible. It's possible. <laughs> um, so it's, it's sort of against the way the platforms want live video to be operated. Well, not every time, but sometimes you can do it like that's what I'm saying. Correct. Correct. Yes, absolutely. I mean, um, does LinkedIn, does Facebook, does any of these platforms want you to just queue up a bunch of pre-recorded videos and play them out as if they were live and that's all you ever do? No. Right. Um, there are certain situations that call for that, uh, you know, which, you know, they definitely understand. Um, and that's the, that's the beauty of what Switcher gives you the ability to do. If you were using the native, you know, LinkedIn doesn't have a native live experience, so I can't really use them as an example. But if you were using the native Facebook uh, live experience, you couldn't load up a pre-recorded video. No. Like you, when you pull up Facebook live, you click go live right. and that's it. Right. So that's the beauty of what switcher gives you is it gives you the ability to connect your Facebook account, your LinkedIn account, your YouTube account, uh, to your switcher, uh, platform or your switcher application, uh, and then load in a pre-recorded video. Uh, Can I go live so, at uh, on Facebook and LinkedIn at the same time? Uh, not currently, and at least not with our platform. Uh, so there are uh, simulcasting platforms out there that will allow you to do that. Yes. Um, so uh, the only one that I know of that will allow you to do it with uh, LinkedIn currently, and this may have changed. I, I might not be up with everything, but it's uh, a company called Restream that gives you the ability to do that. So, but there's companies like Restream. Uh, switchboard.live, Caster, um, you know, and a bunch of others that will allow you to take a single switch, a single switcher feed and then send it to multiple outlets. Yeah. That, I'm, I'm aware of those too. So, but that's important to me and I, I love this product. I love what you guys are doing with switcher studio. So it's one of the things I'm, I'm saying that if it's at least something that's not there now, is it something that's coming? Cause I think it's valuable. I know it's valuable, uh, especially to a guy like me, it's a content creator. And if I want to, you know, have one of my shows that I do during the week launch at a certain time. It'd be awesome to be able to just press the button and it goes to both places. It's a, it just is a time saver and, and an opportunity to engage more people. Um, so that'd be really cool. Well, that's cool to know that something like that would be on the way. And there's some ways that folks can get on with an Android, but you guys going to have to go buy an iPod at the pawn shop or something then with you Android folks out there and get something <laughs> like that. Right. As long as you get like a decent iPod, I guess, uh, like a gen five or six or something, at least if it, you can open up with that and still have decent, I mean, it's a 1080, so 1080 is 1080. It doesn't matter. Uh, you have the 1080 and then you can control stuff out from, from that, from that point. Correct. Yeah. Um, so as long as it will run the newest version of iOS, um, basically I know they just did an update to iOS 13. Um, so, um, it's not why basically it hasn't been, considered like the de facto, uh, you know, new operating system. So iOS 12 is still, you know, possibility. Um, but once everything from Apple moves to iOS 13 and all the devices, you know, everything is built for that. Um, you'll basically, well, we continue to update all of the list of approved devices on our website. So if you gotcha. go to switcher studio and you're like, Hey, I've got this device in my drawer. Will this work? Blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, you can actually see that stuff and we, you know, we continue to update that and work with Apple to understand which devices are being deprecated. Uh, you know, are there any devices that are no longer supporting, uh, as they roll out the new, you know, iPhone 11. Um, but as long as it'll update to the newest iOS, um, and I think ultimately the iPads and iPods 
uh, you, they last a little bit longer than the iPhones. Um, <laughs> as Tell far me. as the, <laughs> <laughs> I just bought the new uh, the X uh, S, and I got the XR for my daughter X S X R like three weeks ago. And yeah. then they said, hey, guess what? The 11 is out. I was like, are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> so that's actually one thing that's uh, super interesting. I'll touch on that real quick. So the iPhone 11 uh, with the new, the three cameras, um, Apple has now made it available to where uh, you have access to choose which uh, lens you want to use through their mm -hmm. API. Uh, so we will be, uh, you know, looking to implement that into uh, our solution shortly to where if you wanted to do more of a wide shot, you could actually choose the wide angle lens, um, on that one camera, on that one camera. And you use, uh, two of those lenses at the same time and have two uh, different views, technically speaking. Technically speaking. Yes. Oh um, gosh. I mean, now you're going to make me have to get an iPhone 11. Thanks a lot, Mark. My wife's going to uh, hate this. <laughs> that'll be that'll be in the new update that you know that happens uh you know sometime in q4 uh as what well, is when we're targeting that so um something that uh you know something just to look forward to you know we're we're trying to tap into those multiple lenses on the back so even like the iphone 8s iphone 7s uh that have the two uh lenses yeah cur currently the way that our system works you can only we only use one of the lenses. Oops. That's, um, the, that's the, well, there's the, oh, the light there, I guess. And then I've got two lenses here, top and bottom on the, this yeah. is the X, uh, what I said, X R. X R. Yeah. Right. And so, it's got two on the front, I think too. Yeah. So with the new updates, you'll be able to, uh, you know, really tap into the optical zoom on those cameras and, and get more out of them uh, essentially is what we're trying to do. Wow. That sounds like really fun. That'd be awesome. Well, that's amazing stuff, Mark. It sounds like a phenomenal program. Um, of course, you know, everybody wants to know the, the big question and, you, you know, you get a website at switchforstudio.com, find out. But tell me how the price points work on this. I mean, you've got uh, a free uh, trial version that goes into a paid version and you've got, I think, three different options. In that's pay. correct. Yeah. Yeah. So we, uh, we currently offer a free 14 day trial. Uh, it does have a watermark uh, on the trial. So you can create as much content as you want. Uh, you know, with it during the, the 14 days, there will be uh, powered by Switcher Studio in the bottom right hand corner um, that will be on those videos. Um, but as far as the subscription is concerned, uh, we have three different levels. Uh, currently, we have an, a personal, a professional and an enterprise or what we call Switcher for Teams. Uh, the personal and the professional are individual subscriptions. So you have one login. Um, you can go live to, you know, as I mentioned earlier, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn Live, Microsoft Stream, custom RTMP destinations. Basically, you can go live to just about any platform with the exception of Instagram because Instagram is locked down for only the Instagram ecosystem um, as far as live video is concerned. Uh, so you can bring in your own custom graphics, logos. Oh, sorry, you know, can I pause right there? So IGTV, uh, will this work for IGTV? IGTV is... You can upload pre-recorded content from that you've made with Switcher to Instagram. You can't use it for any sort of live video experience on Instagram. Okay. All right. Just keep going. I cut you off. Sorry, but it was an important question. Yeah. Um, so the the three different packages. The first one, which is the personal, uh, is thirty nine dollars a month uh, or twenty nine dollars a month paid annually. Um, so thirty nine or three forty eight uh, for the year. Uh, that gives you, you know, the nine cameras, custom graphics, all that stuff. Um, and then to go up to the next plan, which gives you some additional benefits, it's called our professional plan. That one's either 75 a month uh, or 49 a month paid annually, which is uh, $588 a year. Uh, that one gives you the ability to bring in remote guests. So uh, the ability to send a URL to someone and have them become part of your broadcast. Uh, the ability to use a device that's not iOS, that's not on the same uh, wireless network uh, through that uh, video chat experience. So if uh, I sent some of the UR link, like uh, like we're doing Zoom right now, which most people are using, uh, you can come to that URL with me on the show like we're doing now. But if I'm doing it through Switcher Studio, I still could use all my graphics and options that I have on Switcher Studio with your 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 frame that I have on my on my production that I'm doing. 
Correct. Exactly. So um, we also have introduced uh, screen sharing as part of that. So, you know, if, uh, you know, this interaction we're having here on Zoom, if I wanted to share my screen with Zoom, you can do that. Now you can do that with uh, Switcher Studio. So oh, I could great. share what's happening on my computer screen or my phone screen, you know, whatever I want to so do. What about slide presentations? Would it be that you would just pull up your, your PowerPoint thing, or whatever, and it goes through your screen share or... Is there a different yep. way you would do it? That's how you do it. Yeah, you, yeah. You basically uh, you click on the little screen share icon uh, within our video chat uh, system. Uh, it's going to ask you, do you want to share like an entire monitor or a specific window, just like right. you know, uh, just like Zoom does. Um, so with the professional plan, you get one uh, remote guest. So you basically be able to do do a two way type of interview. Um, so that's some additional features. That's the five eighty eight or seventy five a month. And then with our Teams plan. Uh, the Teams plan is gives you up to ten licenses, so you have the ability to invite multiple content uh, creators for you know your brand or your brands. Uh, with video chat, you have up to four guests per license, um, so you know now you have the ability to invite up to four remote participants uh, in your broadcast. You know, do interviews that way uh, with multiple people uh, remotely. Uh, put multiple people on screen, and that's always, uh, you know, part of every subscription level. And the team's plan uh, currently starts at a, a annual contract of five thousand uh, dollars for ten licenses, so it works out to about five hundred dollars per license if you just do, you know, apples to apples cost comparison. So uh, for but, folks that don't understand what you mean by per license, it doesn't mean that I can do ten times four and have forty people on my show. You're telling me what's that? What's license mean? License means an individual uh, switcher experience. So with switcher, you can have up to nine cameras connected to a central uh, switcher hub. So you basically have the ability to do 10 of those simultaneously. So I could be creating content. Matt could be creating content. My you know, brother could be creating content, uh, you know, and each have our own switcher set up doing our own thing at the exact same time, sharing assets and everything with everybody. Uh, but you basically, each person would be logging in, producing their own show or their own content uh, with one or up to nine devices. But they can't that, all interact together at the same time? No. Okay, but we can do so. It's like, whatever, I have an office here in North Carolina and the other offices in California, and that office does their thing, this office does their thing, because as the corporation, as the business, you can buy those 10 licenses, and those different people inside your organization all have the ability to use those types of things, right? Exactly. Okay. There you yep. go. So that's what license is. All right. So then <clears throat> that's pretty cool to have that much available. Um, you know, I guess when it comes down to the, uh, to the entry level package, the personal package, right? So you've got an opportunity for, uh, what was it? $39 a month you said. Yep. Um, now, you know, a lot of companies will, will tease you along just enough to get you to go to the next one at whatever yours was 75 or 55 or something like that. So does that mean that I only get like, one lower third and one title that pops up over here and one or three transitions. But Hey, if you pay us 25 more dollars, you're going to get 700 of these and 34 of those. And <laughs> no, that's a very good question. Uh, and no, that's not the way that it works at all. Um, so there are core features of the app that don't change from one plan to another. Uh, then the, the nine sources, uh, the graphics. We don't limit the number of graphics you can bring in. We don't limit the number of, uh, you know, pre-recorded videos, lower thirds, all that stuff. Like that is just, that's core functionality to the switcher app. That's good. News. Basic, basically what you, uh, not necessarily what you lose, but you get more of as you go up is basically more incremental features. So like video chat being one of those things, you don't get video chat with the basic, entry level subscription. You can create as much content with nine cameras, nine angles, custom graphics, etc. You just can't bring in a remote guest with the the basic plan. Gotcha. Um, so you'd have to up that with that said, that does not mean you couldn't do something like we're doing right now, bring in a Zoom call, bring in a FaceTime call, bring in a Google Hangout and do that that way. We just made it easier to do it in the app um, through the video chat functionality. Uh, which is basically what kind of one of the reasons for the increase in cost as you go up. So if you're like me, if I wanted to do this, but I want it to be, well, right now, obviously this was pre-recorded by the time people watch this, it has already been done, edited and put out. So I could have used the, the first package for something like that. But if I want it to be a guy who, who like me wants to do this live 
and we go on, you know, Thursday at 4.30 Eastern time when we were on here, then we could tell everybody that's it and we go live. I would need the second the package, not the first package, correct? Exactly. Okay. Yep. Uh, and then finally, you know, the, the last, the last tier, you get multiple licenses. You know, there's uh, the a bunch Mahal of, addi- of switcher studio. <laughs> there's a bunch <laughs> you of can addition- rule the world. <laughs> there's a bunch of additional increment, you know, incremental value, right. That, uh, that you get out of that. Um, that's the way that it's currently structured. Uh, we're actually redoing the, the structure, the tiers, uh, starting in middle October. Uh, you'll get every feature on every plan. Uh, you'll just get limited amounts of like video chat. So a video chat, it will be available on the personal plan, uh, starting on October 15th, you'll have one guest and you'll have like five hours of right. video chat. But time. if you go to the next level, you get. So if you go to the next <laughs> level, you do get additional, you know, but that's right. what we wanted to do is we wanted everyone to have the ability to use the tool that's a big uh, and, and have a, you know, have a fair shake at it. Um, you know, it doesn't mean that you have, so the reason that we've done the additional, uh, you know, bump in the amount of time and guests is there are people that want to use the video chat every day. And, you know, they're like, yeah, this is part of my business. This is something I use. It's, you know, it's vital to me to do this. Yeah. So I need to pay that additional money, you know, to do that. It's basically the cost of doing business, right? Like, we're, it's, it's not like we're in this to try to like dupe people into paying more. We want everyone to be able to experience the platform and experience all the features. But we also want people to know that, you know, people, you know, the largest businesses they have a need for more than what I do as an individual content creator, right? So there's going to be plans that are built for everyone in mind. And that's what we're trying to do is we're just trying to, you know, level that playing field. Everyone gets access to everything, although there might be limited features uh, or limited availability on that. Yeah, no doubt. You handle that well. Uh, no doubt. I'm just giving you a hard time. But, you know, it's true. I mean, you, you're you a consumer as much as I am, and God knows we go through all these programs, and it's always the, you get this, you get that, you get this, you get that. So, uh, you know, people are going to be one of those questions while they're listening to this program right now. I don't want them to be able to have the answers, and you did fantastic with that. So, And I love the fact that you're absolutely right. I already knew the answer in that because I've already – you know, seen the software, but uh, it is a, a great opportunity to, to engage with something that you'd like without the whole gotcha thing. You know, it's like, okay, yeah, welcome right. to Switcher Studio, but you, for 14 days, you can try everything, but then you're not anymore, sucker. Uh-uh, not unless you right. get $500 a month. That's stupid stuff. Nobody likes that. So I love that you, you, you did create the programs with all those different types of, of thoughts in, in, in play. Right. Um, so that's pretty awesome. So, so Mark, tell me a little bit here about, about you, man. I know that um, you have been around a few different places in the world mm-hmm. and, and uh, with uh, computer e stuff, right? With software and, and, uh, and uh, online experience things, right? You've done a few things. So tell me a little bit about who Mark is and what got you into the world. How'd you end up here at Switcher Studio? I mean, what all, what all happened there? Yeah. Um, it's definitely been sort of a uh, circuitous route to get to where I'm at today. Um, uh, ultimately, uh, I am very passionate about uh, seeing people succeed, uh, and uh, you know, it kind of is translated into sales uh, and what I do uh, in a sales role. Uh, I I treat sales a little bit different than probably most people treat sales, uh, where they're just always out there to close, 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 close. Not that I'm tr- not trying to close deals. I'm trying to create relationships with people. Um, and for me, that has been, that has been a better service uh, for me and my career being authentic, being you know, a person that listens to what people want, as opposed to just trying to push, you know, a solution off on them. So, um, I originally started out my career, uh, right out of college at GoDaddy. Uh, I was living in Phoenix at the time. Um, GoDaddy, I think it's a little, isn't that an internet company of some sort out there? Yeah, I think they might sell like dom- domain names Domains, or something yeah, like that. That's right. Oh, that's I right. I thought I heard about them, that one. Okay, GoDaddy. <laughs> so uh, I was I was employee number 23 at GoDaddy um, when I left. Um, so there were only 23 people at the organization that have been there longer than I had. Um, I was there for nine years, you know, put in a lot of time, 
Um, I met my wife uh, in Phoenix when I was living down there. We, you know, we ultimately ended up getting married. She's from uh, she's from the Seattle area, which is where we live now. Um, and one of the biggest things that we wanted to do is we wanted to get back to Seattle. Um, I, I came here once, fell in love with it, uh, and I was like, I've got to. I, we have to live there. Like, yeah. But it's definitely a place that I want to live. And um, when when you're used to living in a certain place, you've been there for 10 years. I was making a lot of money at GoDaddy. Um, I, I had what you call the golden handcuffs. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I, I really had to sort of take a look at what's more important for me and, and my relationship with my, you know, my wife at that point. You know, we'd been married for just a few years. You know, what's more important? being here, you know, making money, doing this thing or moving to Seattle, you know, being close to family, starting a family, yeah. uh, you know, that whole thing. And, you know, at that point in my life, you know, basically decided that, uh, it was a risk that we wanted to take. We wanted to move to Seattle, you know, basically found a job that helped me relocate here. Um, you know, ultimately wasn't like the one that I'm at right now was not the one that, you know, was not your dream job. It was an A to B. Was, Exactly. It was, uh, it was a means, uh, to an end, right. Uh, not an end, just a means to, uh, propel me to the next spot of my career. And, um, you know, at, at that point in my life, you know, it was, it was a big step to move halfway across the country. You know, obviously we had some family here, but I didn't have any friends. You know, it's not like I had access to a large circle of friends and, uh, just relocating and was a, was a big, uh, was a big step, uh, in our life. And, uh, you know, it was something that I guess ultimately took a lot, uh, out of us, uh, you know, at, from a relationship standpoint, uh, you know, just from, you know, the time in our life being, you know, the age that we were, but, uh, you know, luckily enough, I have, you know, people in my life that I'm able to, you know, reach out to and, and have conversations with. And ultimately I had a, a very good friend that ended up, he was the one that married, married my wife and I, and, uh, he's a pastor of a church in uh, Scottsdale, um, and the church that I actually helped to uh, to build, uh, moving from Tulsa to Scottsdale, and that's you know a whole other podcast, a uh, whole other <laughs> yeah. topic. Um, but um, Tulsa, you know, that's old, the Holy Land, right there, buddy. Yeah, that's right, um, Rama. Uh, so anyway, yep. um, ended up uh, you know just kind of going back to. Uh, going back to that relationship that I had with, uh, with Brad and, you know, ultimately talking through, you know, a lot of the things that was, that I was going through because he'd been through that, you know, moving from California to Tulsa back to Scottsdale and, you know, this whole thing with, you know, being married, having kids, all of this stuff. And, you know, really just, uh, found, found peace with, you know, the whole move and, uh, you know, working with someone that is a, you know, kind of a trusted advisor, yeah. uh, if you will, uh, that was a through big all step of it. Faith so. then for you to really, to go from, uh, Arizona to Seattle, uh, Arizona, right? Yeah. 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 So to go from Arizona to Seattle, uh, was not just like, because somebody called you up and said, Hey, we've got this six figure job for you. This <laughs> awesome company. We'd love for you to come. This was like, do you really want to go to Seattle? This is where we want to start our family and live. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Uh, and then your, your friend helped you, uh, process, I guess, some of that during that period of time Yeah, to be able to step out as a, as a new husband, uh, as a guy who's experienced with, uh, a comfortable situation, you had no reason to leave GoDaddy. Uh, it was fine. Right. Uh, and then you step out to like wash windows or something. I mean, it was just like, whatever, you know, it's like, oh my God. So that must've been a very, uh, stressful anxiety anxious time maybe some 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 heated discussions at home at times probably some some rough ones and probably some some good ones tears of all sorts you know yeah uh, but then then you guys pulled the trigger and and you moved and it wasn't to the best job wasn't the dream job but eventually uh it seems like uh through the step of faith you did um some doors did end up opening for you Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I definitely look back on that entire sp experience and, uh, and see all the stuff that, you know, I went through at that point uh, has kind of led me to where I'm at right now. Uh, and, 
has allowed me to meet the people that I've met uh, at the last couple of jobs and has ultimately led me to Switcher uh, and doing what we're doing here and uh, and really trying to uh, lead a company, lead a sales organization, uh, you know, be be an advisor uh, in a situation where, you know, this is very much a startup. I mean, uh, when I started at Switcher, I think I was employee number six or something like that. Um, you know, and we, we've grown to almost 20 employees now. Um, but, you know, we're, we're definitely a startup. Um, but we, we have the vision uh, of what we want to accomplish. Uh, and, you know, part of that vision actually is, is working with, uh, with churches and we're work, working with, uh, you know, more of that, that vertical, um, you know, not just uh, Christian churches or, you know, Catholic churches or, you know, Protestant churches, it, working with the entire, um, you know, church, worship, faith, experience, uh, space, yeah, yeah. Uh, because we feel like what we offer helps that world communicate, connect with their community in an authentic manner, even if the person that they're com- connecting with can't be physically in the building. Right. Um, you can still get that. You can still be fed, you know, if you will, um, virtually, you know, you can still connect with, uh, with that pastor, with that, uh, the, that group, uh, in a virtual environment. I mean, there's a reason that zoom exists. It's to do virtual meetings. There's a right, reason right. that these platforms exist. And we really feel like the reason that our platform exists is to help people connect with their community. Uh, and what, what organizations, what groups have a community, it's churches, you know, they have a community of people, they have a community of followers, they have the content that they need to put out there. They just need a vehicle to get it out there and and get it out there in a professional manner. And and we feel like we, we feel like we meet that need. Uh, I agree. That's how, honestly, that's how I first found Switcher was, uh, you know, I was a pastor for a long time. And the church I was last at before I, I launched into what I'm doing now, I was looking for something to do what you're talking about. And there were several options. Um, sure. But then I was just trying to look for something specific that we could use, uh, of course, with Facebook Live, uh, like most places uh, do, and um, try to make that a little better experience. And uh, what you guys had to offer was very uh, congruent, very uh good opportunity for any organizations like that to be able to do what we're wanting, especially when uh, a church and, and most churches that are smaller, nobody's got like a, a video suite and switchers and, and all the stuff that you need to make, make it work and have, you know, five different cameras at different angles of, in the church set up. And that's, nobody has the money for that. Honestly, let's just be serious about it. Right. But if, uh, if you've got a team and, and, Fred and brother Sally and and brother Sally and sister Sally, wrong church, sister Sally and all different types of people. They have these phones, right? You can get little phone mount for 20 bucks and stick your phone where you want to it in the the room, hook up through your switcher. There you are. There you go. Just something so simple like that. Hook up through switcher studio. And now you've got what you were wanting. That was going to cost literally hardware wise, 10, 15, $20,000 easy to do something with maybe three cameras in a church scenario. In this case, you can do up to nine shots in a building, for example, so we're talking about churches or places of worship or a community center or a corporate office or fill in the blank. And you get an opportunity now to, to have a professional uh, scenario and video that looks like you have twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars worth of hardware off of an iPhone. <laughs> That's pretty freaking awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, and, uh, and I said this earlier, uh, we talked about it briefly, but you know, as these devices get better and better, um, you can't make the phone call experience any better. Like there's no reason to. So what do you make better? Right. You make the camera better. You make the processor better. Right. And when you make the camera better and the processor better, that means better video. That means more capability for uh, our platform uh, and sending video, you know, back to a central switcher over the same network uh, faster. Um, it gives us, you know, more options uh, with different things as far as Zoom uh, capability. So uh, I think we are. I think we're poised, you know, for to to do a lot uh, in the next year plus. Um, I think 
uh, you know, ultimately, if anyone, you know, whoever's listening to this, if you have any questions, we would obviously love to talk to you. Um, you know, please feel free to reach out to me. You can find me on LinkedIn. Um, I, I think I'm really the only person with my spelling of my name, which is fairly unique uh, in yeah, this world. Yeah, and you, say, you pronounced it go, like G-O with, not gay with. G-A-W-I-T-H looks like gay with, but it's you pronounce it go with. Correct. Uh, so it actually used to be spelled G-O, um, but my great, great grandfather, I think, changed it to G-A. Huh. Not really sure why. Um, now it just confuses people as far as the pronunciation. Um, so I really don't care what you call me. Uh, just don't call me late for dinner, uh, yeah. sort of thing. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm definitely here to answer questions. I would love to talk to you. We would love to talk to you. Uh, we'd love to understand what you're trying to do with video. Uh, if you have questions about it, etc. Uh, we have a pretty robust online community as well, uh, for people that are using our platform and, um, you know, we We'd love for everyone to try it out. We think it yeah, would work so, for everybody. Uh, so to go there and try the trial, it's a 14-day trial. Uh, you can go to, what's the website again? Switcherstudio.com. Dot com. It's right there, and you can click on the, uh, the, the version right there. It's got a pricing uh, menu right there. You can click on for the pricing, or you can, you can sign up right there and click on the free trial, which is, as you said, 14, not seven, but 14 days. To, mm -hmm. uh, to make as many videos as you possibly can in 14 days and say, woohoo, look what I did. <laughs> so that's pretty cool stuff. Yeah, kick the tires, test it out, um, yeah. you know, see if it works for you before you pay. So That's fantastic. And Mark, you've been at, uh, uh, as we're closing up here, you've been at, uh, at this company now uh, from your transition to Seattle. Um, how long have you been there now? Um, it will be two years in, uh, February that I've been with switcher. So, uh, I've been involved in the live video space, um, for probably close to going on five now. Um, so company I was at previously, uh, they sold products that help people brand their live videos. So the dot live domain extension was uh, owned by the company that I used to work for, uh, being in the domain industry, uh, which is kind of how I got involved in live video. Uh, how I met the guys from Switcher, and uh, you know how I've uh, really become uh, part of this of this industry and uh, of this movement. Yeah. I guess you could say. Well, that's fantastic, and I, I love that. Um, you know, even at one point in your life, that's obviously the name of the show is called Hope Revealed, and uh, you had your own struggles even in your life with your your desires. You went to college, you you landed a great job, a dream job, and some some good money was there and you're doing well. And then all of a sudden, dun, 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 here comes this beautiful gal who wrecks your world and says, Oh man, now I love her. I want to get married in Seattle. Oh my gosh. And now you made this big choice to come to Seattle because you love the coffee or something probably or whatever. So you go to Seattle, <laughs> the family's there. The weather's all good. It's not that great. It's not a lot of, a lot of rain. It's overcast here too, but it's beautiful. I've been to Seattle. Like it. And then all of a sudden now you're in Seattle and then boom, two years ago, you're at this place now and, called Switcher Studio, and you have an opportunity to really bring things to people across the world that can help unite uh, uh, their their cause, their efforts, uh, and them with the people that, that are really wanting to reach at the same time with some really cool things that are usually a lot extra money to get on other types of software. Let's just face it. You guys throw some stuff in there that are what people want to have. Um, that's yeah. fantastic and super excited that you're able to be with us here on the show today, Mark. And uh, again, folks, if you want to get a hold of him or anybody else there at, uh, at where he's at, not at GoDaddy. No, he's not there anymore. He's over at Switcher Studio, and switcherstudio.com is where you can find them. Or you can even find Mark right here on LinkedIn platform, and he is available. You just hit message, and he'll, he'll hit you back up too eventually because uh, there are a lot of people who hit us up with messages, right? Uh, That's right. So, yeah, it'll be great. So, Mark, it's been fantastic again to have you here on the show, and thanks for sharing so much about the uh, the software. I think it's incredible. I think folks will be extremely excited about this and um, and be able to use it. So, head on over there, folks. Head on over to switcherstudio.com, and you can go on your iPhone. Uh, you can go to, um, to the uh, Apple Store and just uh, type in Switcher Studio. There it is. Download it. It's a free download. You can put your phone and check it out. Because uh, they ask you to do that when you when you log into the website, they ask you actually to download the app first and then set up your account, which I did backwards, but it still worked. And then you're able to put it all together, and it all works happy. So, and if it doesn't work right, you can call Mark and say, "Help me That's out, right. man! I don't know what's going on." Right? And they'll help you out. All right. So, folks, That's thank true. you so much for being with us today, Mark. Again, it's been awesome. Thank you so much for that. Next time I come over to Seattle, we're gonna have a big cup of coffee and 
have a good time uh, talking about some cool things about uh, about that area that you live in. It's beautiful there. Um, I've got some friends in Ephrata, the big booming met- metropolis of Ephrata, which is uh, out towards the middle of nowhere from where you're at. But uh, some some great stuff. Soap Soap Lake, I think, is what's out there. Is a, yep. Yeah, big place out Soap Lake. All right, sorry, folks. That's extra podcast day. We'll talk about Soap Lake. Thanks again, folks. Don't forget, no matter what you do, there's always going to be a darkness. There's always going to be a problem, always a situation we face in our lives. It's going to happen. But the reality is, if you look hard enough, you'll always find a hope revealed.